Home by Christmas. Here's what I think about the president's announcement to pull out troops of Afghanistan by the end of the year. What's up, guys? Max here with another episode of the Scuttlebutt Show. In this one, I'm going to talk about what I think about the president announcing that all troops that are still in Afghanistan might be home by the end of the year. Let me start out by kind of explaining to you my experience in Afghanistan uh, and where I'm coming from with this perspective, okay? So you guys know what my background is. Uh, I'm a Navy veteran. I did almost 14 years in the Navy. I did five deployments, and two of those deployments were to Afghanistan. Both times I was deployed there working with the Army. Once was as what the Navy calls an individual augmentee, which is where the Navy went to go help the Army with their mission uh, because they were having some manpower issues. During that time, I was doing detainee ops, or working at the prison, guarding uh, and caring for people who had been detained by U.S. forces in Afghanistan, all Afghani locals, and there were many of them. Then on my second deployment to Afghanistan, which was three years later, I was there with the Army again, and this time I was at an outpost in the southeastern part of Afghanistan in the Ghazni province, and there we were just doing uh, kind of village stability, district stability, uh, making sure that things were safe for the local population there and they didn't have to worry about attacks from the Taliban. If I'm being honest, I've thought for a long time we should probably end the war in Afghanistan because the question is, who are we fighting? Okay, so let's start, let's start with who are we fighting in Afghanistan? Around November 2001, the U.S. invaded Afghanistan post 9-11. And the enemy there was al-Qaeda in Afghanistan who's, who was headed up by uh, Osama bin Laden. And... Then we, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, declared victory in Afghanistan in like 2002 or three. I'll post that down here. The transition from dictatorship to democracy will take time, but it is worth every effort. You know, when I'm filming these long videos, I do enjoy a little coffee and it just tastes better out of a Scuttlebutt Show coffee cup with the train to train logo on the other side. Pick one of these up today at scuttlebuttshow.com where you can find all the other merch like these t-shirts that you see me wearing in all the videos. All right, back to the video. And then we've been there ever since. So why have we been there ever since? Well, there are a lot of ongoing conflicts in Afghanistan. There's Al Qaeda, there's Taliban, there's local militias and all these, and there's different you know, factions of Taliban and all these different groups are at war with each other. And it's really hard to come up with some kind of stabilized, uni unified government in Afghanistan to, to make sure that the country is safe for us to leave. Because if we leave, we don't want everything that we did to just reverse back to what it was before we ever went in there. Uh, a lot of that's been complicated by the fact that the government hasn't really been that great since we have been there. Like we elected, or we didn't elect, but while we were there, Karzai got elected. And he's, in my opinion, you know, very corrupt and his family's very corrupt. Uh, there's massive drug smuggling operations that happen in Afghanistan that the U S has been countering for, you know, the better part of two decades. And then there's all the, the individual violence that exists from town to town, village to village in Afghanistan that we've tried to protect people from. So try to understand this about Afghanistan, big country with giant gaps in between major population centers. And a lot of people in these, in like local villages in Afghanistan, they don't have access to travel very far. And they also don't have like internet, cell phones, power, things like that, that we think are just like normal everyday things. So there's people from one village that have a village a few miles away that they have no idea is there. They've never heard of them. They don't know about global politics and economics. They don't know what the U.S. is there for. All they know is what they've been told. So you've got a lot of bad actors, be it Taliban, militias, you know, Al-Qaeda. They go from village to village and they recruit soldiers to attack or, you know, act on their behalf. And this could be kids, old people, women. There's like no limits here, okay? So the enemy, in a lot of cases, are just local villagers that have been either lied to uh, uh, or had their hand forced or, you know, been corrupted to think that they should go out and attack Americans. And so for a long time, we've been fighting farmers on a large scale. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's complicated because the question is, 
who is the enemy that we're fighting? And then what does victory look like? Okay. Over that time, who is the enemy and what does victory look like has changed. In 2009, when I was there the first time, that was when we were really doing a big push for coin, the counterinsurgency. That was the hearts and minds campaign. Uh, the thing about hearts and minds is it was the idea was go out there, win the hearts and minds, and you won't have a next generation of enemy. You won't have a next generation of fighters who are dislike Americans. But it was really ineffective because your actions aren't going to be enough to convince the next generation not to dislike Americans when they're getting so much propaganda from groups like the Taliban. And the Taliban, their ultimate goal was to be recognized as like a political organization. They wanted to take control of the government of Afghanistan and run it their way, which included a lot of drug smuggling, a lot of drug dealing, uh, included a lot of violence, included a lot of uh, human rights violations, and that's what we've been trying to prevent and establish a better democratic government in Afghanistan for the betterment of the people there. The next thing I want to talk about is what does it look like boots on ground in Afghanistan right now? Well, there's about 4,000 troops in Afghanistan in a mostly advisory role. So they've been out there. There's been pockets of ISIS in Afghanistan that they've been fighting. There's been you know green on blue attacks, which is where, let's say, Afghan National Army opens fires on opens fire on United States military members uh, in an insider attack, which insider attacks are always one of the greatest threats that you face when you're downrange because they could come from the people that you trust the most and those people have the most access to you. So you always have to look out for those. Anyway, and those 4,000 people have been spread out throughout the country into very specific fighting areas uh, and bases. So what does that mean for the country as a whole? Well, anecdotally, uh, let me just give you one little story and you can extrapolate that to the rest of the war in Afghanistan. So where I was in 2013, 2014, in Ghazni province, we had a little base out there. And when that base closed, when military pulled out of that base, it was immediately overran by Taliban. And we had spent years there building checkpoints, training a &A, giving them supplies that they would need to defend themselves, reinforcing their structures, developing a local government that had systems in place for them to protect themselves, clearing IEDs, finding and eliminating bad guys. And as soon as we left, the Taliban took that base over. So we lost all that ground. And that's been happening all over Afghanistan. As soon as we leave, that place gets taken over by, you know, the bad guys. So we've, we've lost in a lot of ways a lot, most of the ground that we gained while we were there. What the Taliban wants is to take over as the leading government in Afghanistan, like I was saying. They want to be recognized as a political party. They want to own the government office out there. They want to control the country. And what's happened recently is we've, if you've heard, the United States has been engaging in peace negoci negotiations with the Taliban. There's been a United States Taliban ceasefire. There's been Afghan Taliban negotiations, Afghan Taliban ceasefires. But... In my opinion, it's not going to matter because as soon as the United States leaves, it's going to be violence again. So we're left with the question, what are we going to do? It's got to end at some point. How are we going to get out? We have to think, why did we go in the first place? We went there because Al-Qaeda was there post 9-11, and we've been fighting there for 19 years, over 19 years as I, the date I make this video. So I don't think that there's a way for us to get out with an idea of victory the way that we had imagined victory would look like. I think we're going to have to kind of take an L, so to speak, on a lot of the ground that we've gained, a lot of the missions that we were trying to run. It's just, but, you know, eventually you've got to stop. It's got to stop. Or, it, you know, it goes on forever. And the problem with it going on forever is for the majority of the last 10 years, we haven't really been fighting to win. And I don't mean the people on the ground haven't been fighting to win. The soldiers on the ground, the military on the ground has been fighting to win. They've been fighting hard for their lives, okay? And to protect the lives of others. There's people in Afghanistan depending on the United States to support them and protect them so that they can survive and get an education and get a job and learn, you know, even just learn how to read and provide for their families and just live and you know, thrive. But politically, 
We haven't been fighting to win anything because we've been drawing down, drawing down, drawing down. Less and less investment, less and less people on the ground means less and less of an impact. So when you're in a conflict, it's either fight to win completely, willing to do whatever it takes, or don't. And if we're not going to fight to win completely, as a, as a, if the government of the United States is not going to pursue victory in Afghanistan completely, regardless of the cost, then we shouldn't be there at all. That's what I think. If you're asking yourselves, was it worth it? Was it worth it to be in Afghanistan this long? The people who you ask are going to give you different answers. Because if you ask me, was it worth it to be in Afghanistan this long? I think back to people that I've met there, individuals, right? I think of individuals that I've met in Afghanistan, locals, that we've helped. And to see the impact that we've had on their lives, to see the great things that we were able to do while we were there, I would say it was worth it. Because to me, what I did over there was worth it because we helped save lives, We help protect people from horrible things, truly horrible things. And so that was worth it. If you ask somebody who looks at it from a perspective of capital gains versus losses, territory gained, long-term American political strategy, they might say it wasn't worth it. But what matters to you more, I guess? And I'm not trying to give you the answer. I can give you the answer for myself, which is, we, and it's the same thing that people are doing there right now. We're helping individuals on the ground in that country. And that matters. And that's worth it, in my opinion. But we haven't been fighting to, you know, win the country for years. And so if we're not going to do that, eventually we've got to stop. Eventually we've just got to say, we're not doing anything anymore. It's got to end. And if that's what's happening right now, maybe it is the right time. What do I think about United States troops coming home by Christmas? It's got to happen sometime. It might as well happen now or next year, or last year. And one time's as good as another. Any time in the last three or four years would have been a good time to do it. There's just, there's no end goal. There's no end clear victory goal that we're going towards, that we're we're not moving towards anything. So we might as well just, at some point, we've got to cut the cord and say, that's it, we're leaving. We're pulling out. The war in Afghanistan is over. The war in Iraq is over. That's it. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button. I look forward to talking to you guys really soon in the next video. Check out one of these videos that's about to pop up on the screen. I'll talk to you soon. I'm out for now. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button up in the corner here and check out this next video. If you want, in the description down below, there's links where you can get Scuttlebutt Show merch and find out how you can support the channel. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to talking to you guys very soon.